Trinity Exposed, number four, The Invisible God, part one. Romans chapter one, verse 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them. Uh, true for people in the first century, but of course true for anybody that's ever lived. But here's an interesting one. One of my you know, people on Patreon brought this point up, and I think it's a great point. <clears throat> one of our supporters here at King James Video Ministries. Verse 20, Romans chapter 1, verse 20. Check this out. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Now, I've preached for years and years that you can... You can see proof of God by looking at nature and the complexity of nature and everything else. And that's true, certainly. But look at what the verse is actually saying. The invisible things of Him. Not the invisible things He, he made or the things that are visible things. The invisible things of Him. Who's it talking about? Jesus Christ. From the creation world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made. You can still, you have that understanding. He can make things. Even His, Jesus' eternal power and Godhead. Do you see it there? He's clearly seen. Jesus Christ is clearly seen. The audience that Paul is writing to there. He's saying He was clearly seen. And you can see His eternal power and Godhead so that they are without excuse. Anybody who's out there has no excuse. But specifically, this here, I believe, is past tense. Let me continue. Verse 21, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. The whole verse is, is past tense. Now, again, you can apply it for today and everything else instruction and righteousness for rebuke, for correction. You know, certainly that's there. But the verse specifically is speaking in the past tense. Look at the thing again. When they knew, that's going to be important later, when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God. Just like all the Trinity people out there do today. Well, Jesus is God, but He's not God the Father. He's God the Son. You say, well, then they're two separate gods. No, they're, they're one God. Well, then Jesus is God the Father. No, He's not God the Father. All right? Insane. And what happens? Verse 22. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man, and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Hmm. Uh, what's the popular depiction of the Trinity? Um, two men and a bird. Even though the Bible never says that the Holy Spirit comes as a dove, He appears like as a dove, comes down from heaven like as a dove. Doesn't say He's a dove, like as a dove. So I've talked about in other studies. You could say somebody runs like the wind. That doesn't mean that they are the wind. It's a description of, of how they're moving. He descends like a dove. All right. First Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. Hmm. Um, do, you, do you suppose when it says there in 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, God was manifest in the flesh, that it means the Godhead? Everything? Jesus Christ is God. Fully, completely God. He's not a third of God. He's not uh, God the Son, separate from God the Spirit, God the Father. He's not any of that. He's the Godhead. God manifest in the flesh. Such an interesting thing there. They saw him, and they didn't know that he was God. Just like the people that hold to the Catholic Trinity. They don't really believe that Jesus Christ is God the Father. 
they don't believe it for one minute. They'll call the Bible a lie in Colossians chapter 2, where it talks about, in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. That's not true. Pretty dangerous place to be if you're a professing Christian.